Thank you, good evening, welcome, because tonight we are exploring the world of the paranormal. It's an area that some people find difficult to accept. So, what's new? Well, in 1772, the French Academy of Sciences was adamant that meteorites didn't exist. In fact, they declared that stones falling from the sky was a physical impossibility. At present, telepathy, psychokinesis, extraterrestrials and life after death are just some of the subjects that science cannot yet accept but perhaps one day will. Tonight, we're going to see if we can actually do some telepathy here in the studio. In the middle of the debate about life on Mars, has NASA been lying to us about an ancient civilization on Mars? We've some startling new evidence. And we'll travel to an Italian community where the villagers talk to plants, and they believe that the plants can talk back to them. First, though, Dr. Gregory Ant Ewan is a fully qualified physician from Russia, he makes an extraordinary claim. He believes that his eyes are able to see into the depths of the human body with the precision of an X-ray machine. So we decided to put him to the test. Ever since Russian-born doctor, psychiatrist and psychic George Anta Ewan moved to Milwaukee two years ago, he's been shaking the American medical profession with his ability to diagnose patients just by looking at them. His incredible results, combined with his piercing eyes, have earned him the name Dr. X-Ray. It all started when there was a patient I had to see, but I had no opportunity and no time to consult with other doctors and I was very worried about how I was going to make the diagnosis. But when the patient came in, all of a sudden I saw his energy fields and then I was able to make the diagnosis on the spot. Depending on the condition of the organs, you see different colors. A normal organ has a red or orange shade to it. If the organ is weak, it's a blue color. If the organ is very sick and has chronic inflammation, it has a black color. An exhausted or emaciated organ is a yellow color. And the color of healing is green. <laughs> this woman is a fully qualified medical doctor with her own practice in Milwaukee. She now also works as Dr. Gregory's interpreter. At first I denied and said that it cannot be true, but after working and seeing him working with the patient, seeing him making diagnosis, now I definitely know that he has this extraordinary abilities of making the diagnosis and making correct diagnosis. We asked the extremely skeptical Dr. Goss, who had never had any dealings with the paranormal before, to select and diagnose two patients. Dr. X-Ray had never had any contact with either of them before. I selected these patients because each of them provided uh, unique medical conditions uh, to challenge Dr. Gregory. Dr. Goss diagnosed Yvonne Honey as suffering from hypertension, depression and back pain, caused by a slipped disc and a severe ankle sprain. Yvonne has also had a hysterectomy and her left ovary has been removed. Then. Dr. X-Ray showed us his technique. It was like a person just like looking through you. I felt like tensed at first. Um, then after a while, um, I was just totally relaxed. In the left hemisphere, between the temporal and parietal... Well, some of the things that we concurred on were that uh, she was uh, hypertensive. Um, she's been dealing with depression lately. He doesn't uh, see uterus, he sees only fibrous tissue. It was interesting that he was not able to see her uterus or her left ovary or that her left ovary area appeared scarred and indeed she's had a, uh, an abdominal hysterectomy and a left oophorectomy. Her right ovary is still in place. Uh, those are some of the main things that I thought were in common with uh, my findings. I thought he was wonderful. He was totally accurate on things that he said about me and he just clarified a lot of things that I thought or felt but wasn't very sure of. When you add up all the things that he 
the positive things he mentioned and th or the things that he didn't mention, um, I would probably give him a score of about 75 out of 100. Impressive results. But then, to prove to the skeptics that he was not making any deductions from the physical appearance of the patients, Dr. X-Ray proposed diagnosing a patient while sitting in another room from just her name and date of birth. Dr. Goss diagnosed Henrietta Clark as having hepatitis C and suffering from an enlarged thyroid. She's also had a bilateral mastectomy due to a chronic infection in both breasts, which did not respond to treatment with antibiotics. After 15 minutes, Emma went into the other room to give Dr. X-Ray's diagnosis. Hello. So the problem is number one, hormonal dysfunction, number two, central nervous system, number three, slowly progressing hepatitis. Dr. felt small amount of toxins in the blood. Probably the main things that we uh, had in concurrence were the fact that uh, she was depressed, um, uh, the fact that she had uh, an, an overactive thyroid, um, possibly. Um, he also had mentioned that he didn't see her breasts, he saw, he saw fibrous tissue there, and that was pretty amazing. Um, what I was most impressed at was the fact that he picked up that she has hep chronic active hepatitis. Totally amazing, totally accurate. He knows things from that happened to me during my childhood. And I don't see how <laughs> he could even know those things about me. And he's never, I've never even saw him, never even talked to him. And it's just totally amazing. I would have to say that um, given the fact that she was in a, in a remote room and he didn't even see the patient, it's just amazing. Um, I would rate his accuracy about at least 85 to 90 percent in her case. Some people say that we can talk to animals, but can we talk to plants, or more significantly, can plants talk to us? Well, a group of people called the Daminar community based in northern Italy believe that they can. We went there to see for ourselves if, indeed, plants are intelligent. In the 1970s, a small group of people bought this remote valley in the Italian Alps and founded the community of Daminar. They started businesses and collected donations from believers and flourished. Now, more than 700 people from all over the world live here and study all things spiritual and new age. What we are trying to do is to create a society where it is possible to live in harmony. Human beings, animals, plants, subtle intelligence, all parts of the same ecosystem. Daminar hit the headlines in the early 90s when it was discovered that for the past 15 years, the community had secretly been building a huge underground cathedral in the hill behind the house. The completely subterranean temple of mankind is a vast labyrinth of corridors, chapels, artificially lit stained glass ceilings and hand-decorated chambers, all dedicated to man himself. But the temple isn't the only secret to emerge from Damanar, for now the followers claim to have made an astounding discovery. They claim that just like people, the plants in the forest have real feelings too. One of the most interesting fields of research for us is that of vegetable sensitiveness, and we have found that it's possible to communicate with plants. The head of their research team says that he's discovered a way to listen to what the plants have to say. We've discovered that plants react strongly to the conditions in which they find themselves. A plant can have a strong emotional reaction. It's capable of feeling fear when someone is going to destroy it or tear off one of its leaves. But they can also feel pleasure when someone sends positive thoughts, thoughts of love and affection to it. They believe that you can tell how a plant is feeling by measuring its electrical activity. Just plug into the leaves or roots and watch. 
The researchers maintain that increased activity registered on their equipment shows that the plant is feeling pleasure. A decrease means that it's feeling fear or pain. And this is what happened when the plant was treated to a spot of Mozart. When people approach, they claim the plants immediately react because they know something's afoot. Researchers attempted to strike fear into the very heart of this innocent pot plant. I hate you! I hate looking at you! I hate the color green! I don't like you! A sharp drop in electrical activity was clearly noticeable. We have discovered that plants also react to what is happening to other plants. If, for example, someone is going to destroy another plant nearby, the plant which is under analysis reacts as though it was being threatened itself. So there is a form of telepathy among plants. In their quest for a deep and meaningful emotional relationship with the flowers and trees of the forest, they've invented a way for them to all make beautiful music together with the help of a synthesizer and a modest bank of electronics. Each variation of the electrical activity is transformed into a variation in the music, and the synthesizer is what then produces the final sound. We are trying to make this into an art form. To train a plant how to play, it takes a lot of patience. What we normally do is we have human musicians and dancers go play and sing very close to the plant in order for the plant to realize that she or he can interact with the human beings. After a while, the plants actually understand they are linked to the cables and they can control the machine, the synthesizer. And once they do that, it's obvious that they're very happy because they start playing wonderful melodies. And if outsiders poke fun at this sort of thing, they don't care. There are 700 believers here, and they're convinced that they can't all be wrong. What our experiments have shown us is that plants are not objects. They are not things which do not react. They show sensitivity, and you could almost say even intelligence to what's happening around them. cover-up taking place about an ancient civilization on Mars. We've got some incredible evidence and we'll see if we can do some telepathy here in the studio in just a moment. <laughs> The Viking mission to Mars took some spectacular pictures of the rusty-coloured landscape. However, it was two aerial photographs that ignited what has now been a 20-year controversy. The photos taken in what's known as the Cydonia region depict what appears to be five pyramids and what also has become known as the face on Mars. The historic Viking mission to Mars sent back the first photographs from another planet. The probe that landed showed a rocky desert surface, nothing remotely to suggest evidence of life as we know it. But one image, taken from nearly 1,200 miles above the Cydonia region, revealed a rock formation that looked like a face. NASA scientists tried to dismiss it as a trick of the light. Then some years later, two researchers uncovered a second photo of the face, which had apparently been misfiled by NASA. It proved the formation was something more than a trick of light and shadow. Could it really be the result of natural erosion? 
or had it actually been constructed? Ananda Sarasena is one of a group of independent scientists who believe that there's much more to the face than NASA will admit. When the face was digitally analyzed on, on the computer, one could see that it appeared to look like an ape face. There seemed to be symmetry to the face. There appeared to be an eyeball in the eye cavity, teeth in the mouth. It also appeared to be wearing some kind of a headdress. Sarasena and his colleagues noticed a series of unusual pyramid-shaped objects with unnaturally straight edges. Then, they saw a number of relatively small, but extremely bright mounds. When I joined up these small bright features, I noticed that they formed a pattern. A careful analysis of the pattern suggested that they formed right triangles in a repeating manner, which was suggestive of intelligent layout. They ran computer programs to calculate the probability of such geological arrangements happening by chance alone. The odds were less than a staggering 200 million to one. Robert Baval is an expert on the origin of the Sphinx and the pyramids in Egypt. If the monuments of Mars prove to be artificial, then we have to explain who built them. And there are only two possibilities. They were either built by the Martians themselves, or they were built by an extraterrestrial intelligence coming from outside the solar system. Incredibly, he believes that there are four compelling similarities between the monuments in Egypt and those on Mars. The first is visual, the second is mathematical, the third is positioning to do with the latitudes, and the fourth is astronomical alignments. Startling support for Boval comes from geologists who now say that the Sphinx and the pyramids could be even older than the earliest Egyptian civilizations. They could have been built at a time when there wasn't supposed to be a civilization here on this planet. So the question arises, who built them? We have to consider the possibility of an extraterrestrial connection. This theory gets support from Joe McMonigle, who worked for the American intelligence services for over 20 years as a remote viewer. That's someone with the psychic ability to visualize and describe far distant places. One day, Joe was given some map coordinates to target. He had no idea that they'd come from NASA and were actually places on Mars. One of the targets was a very large pyramid and it had uh, interconnecting corridors and much larger rooms. Uh, there was another target, which was essentially a group of pyramids. There were at least four or five in that group and laid out in a specific geometric pattern, which turned out to be accurate. But as Joe was drawing, he picked up something more. Towards the end of the session, I became aware that there was uh, something else, and it turned out that it had a lot to do with who had constructed the pyramids. I had a perception that that was a race of beings or humanoids that uh, were sort of passing through at the time. My sense was they were moving through the, the solar system and had to move on to a different location. It's possible they moved here. According to Joe McMonigle, NASA used his information in the planning of the ill-fated soft lander sent to Mars in the Observer mission. Just as it entered the orbit of Mars, the cameras went dead. We all know that the soft lander didn't make it. It was uh, either turned off deliberately or they had an accident. Did NASA deliberately withhold information on Cydonia, as some researchers have suggested? It's on record that in the 60s, top government scientists secretly told NASA that it was likely they would find evidence of other intelligence in the form of ruins or signals. But the impact of such a discovery could destabilize civilization. Now NASA have begun a new investigation of Mars, but exploration of Cydonia is at the bottom of their list of priorities. This mission could finally resolve the mystery of the face, but many are asking, will NASA allow it? Has anybody here had the experience of knowing what someone close to them was feeling, even though they were miles away? Anybody had that experience? 
OK, well, one university study shows that six out of ten people believe that they've experienced ESP, that's extrasensory perception. However, some scientists still deny the very existence of telepathy. They say that there's no acceptable proof that it exists. So tonight, we're going to try and provide some proof. Let's meet identical twins, Elaine and Evelyn Dove. <laughs> Thank you very much for coming. Would you say that you have a psychic bond or psychic link between yourselves? Yes. Um, it's something that can be, cannot be explained, but things just happen. What kind of things do you experience then? What sort of things happen? Um, well, there's on one occasion, while I was in hospital after an operation, and I was in a lot of pain, and my sister came the next day and she said, I didn't sleep last night. You were in a lot of pain, weren't you? I went, yes. So you, you can feel your sister's pain then? Yeah. And vice versa? That's right. You have no idea what we've got in store for you this evening, have you? No. no. OK. <laughs> All right. I'm going to ask Evelyn to go away to another room in a different part of the building, if that's OK. OK. Elaine, would you like to have a seat over here? Make yourself feel nice and relaxed. Evelyn won't be aware of anything that goes on here in the studio, but we've got a camera there with her, and we're connecting her to a polygraph instrument, which is a very sensitive device that records the minutest changes in the mind and body. So if anything unusual should happen to Elaine here in the studio, it should show up on the instrument. And our polygraph expert, Jeremy Barrett, is there with her. So, Elaine, we're going to see if your thoughts can be transferred to your sister. So, if you'd like to just relax, think about something that's really nice and relaxing for a moment. Maybe remember a time you were on holiday, something <laughs> like that. Just okay. relax. Okay, do that now. Relax deeply. Really relax. Jeremy, can you hear me now? Yes, I can. Can you give your headphones to Evelyn for a moment, please? Yep. Evelyn, were you aware of anything going on? I could just feel, it's very hard to explain, but the fact that she was... We were both trying to relax and she was very, very nervous. But as soon as it finished, I opened my eyes and knew she was OK. Does that mean that you somehow knew exactly how she was feeling? Yes. Did the polygraph get any hard evidence for that? Let's replay it, see what happened. This time in slow motion. And there goes the flash and the bang and everything in front of Elaine. And look at those big spikes in her twin sister's graph. What do you make of this, Jeremy? Well, Evelyn certainly picked up something from somewhere. No stimulus was applied to her here in this studio. And there certainly was something coming. And we'd asked her to think about her sister. And it looks to me like shock or surprise. OK, thank you very much, Jeremy. Thank you, Evelyn. Thank you, Elaine. <laughs> and I think you'll agree, that was a remarkable demonstration. Please join me again next week for another journey into the amazing world of the paranormal. Good night.